can you maybe talk a little bit about uh, what about support? So I think I've developed a passion really for the customer experience and making sure people have a really good customer experience. And in that role, one of the things she asked me to do, she said, we're using support logic. And after I started showing teams that I started, you know, kind of guiding people along, we should be looking at these things to make sure that we're reacting quickly and turning cases around. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, what these individual roles mean and how they play into how you're using support logic? Where we brought support logic into this equation is swarm leads would set up alerts for their home swarm. We started with swarm alerts as this says, just setting up the key attention and sentiment flags. And one of the things we did with swarm leads was we actually built a training that was how do we kind of want you to set up your support logic? We had one product area where it was always kind of struggling just a little bit. So yep. the alerts, the actual alerts dropped, but we had no change in the escalation. We can show this now to people and say, look, nothing else changed. And then skills applications. One of the things we do see in support logic is we might see coverage gaps. We don't get a lot of cases in it, so there's not a huge team coverage. It removes some of the need for swarm leads to pass things over to the managers. Specifically, he's asking, what has been your ROI? on the use of support logic. Another, another question we have is, you know, there's a lot for, for other, other organizations that are, that are starting to use uh, support logic. 